Hey, this is Mike with Buscadero Motorcycles. Uh, really excited that you've got one coming in the mail. When you get it, it'll come in a crate. And it's easy to put together, but there's a definite order and a few tricks we've learned. So why don't you follow along with me and we'll get started right away. All right, you'll start by cutting away all the cardboard and packing materials. Inside you'll find everything secured with wire and zip ties. The bike will be packed inside a metal crate. You'll just need a 14 millimeter socket to take it apart. Keep in mind, yours might look slightly different in the way that it's packed. Every batch might be different, but the core process should still apply either way. If your gas cap is locked, use one of the keys that comes in the ignition to unlock it. Then you can remove the protective film and put the cap back on so nothing falls into the tank. In order to get the bike off the crate, you need to remove the axle bolt. Start by using a five millimeter Allen wrench to loosen up the axle clamp. Then remove the nut on the axle and pull it through. But keep in mind, there are two spacers that will fall out, so make sure you put them both back on the axle and set the whole thing aside in a safe spot for later. Once you've cut the wire on the rear wheel and freed everything up, you should be able to lift it off the crate. This whole process will be a lot easier if you can get the bike up on something. If you don't have a bike stand like this, you can use something like a milk crate, a Yeti cooler, whatever you can find in the garage to get the bike elevated. For the next step, you'll need a six millimeter Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter socket to remove the handlebar mounts. For shipping, they install them underneath the top part of the triple clamp and you'll need to remove them and place them on top for your handlebars. So now you just need to free up your bars and it's important to do this very carefully. The wires feeding into the starter button and the kill switch can be pulled out if you tug too hard on them. So if you set the bars down, make sure the tension is on the throttle cable, not on the electrical wires. So now you can place the mounts on top of the triple clamp, set the bars, and slide the bolts into place and fasten the nut from underneath. Once you start tightening them down, keep an eye on the gaps in the clamps and make sure you're tightening them down evenly. And as far as the angle of the bars, we usually like to start out in line with the rake of the forks and then adjust them from there if you need to. Also, make sure the bars are centered in the clamps before you tighten them down all the way. All right, let's move on to the front wheel. For shipping, they temporarily mount your brake caliper using one bolt. Remove that bolt and let it hang for a minute. Grab your axle and pull the two spacers off. There should be a big one and a small one. These spacers are crucial for getting your front wheel to fit. If they're on the wrong side, you won't be able to get your wheel on right. Place the small spacer in the side of the hub without the disc. And place the bigger spacer, obviously on the other side, with the disc brake. Then hold the wheel in between the forks and align the holes as closely as you can. Then slide the axle through. It might give you a little grief, but if you wiggle and move everything around till it aligns, it should push through eventually. Fasten the nut on the threaded side and then grab a 10 millimeter Allen wrench and a 19 millimeter socket and tighten it down. Then grab your five millimeter Allen wrench again and tighten up the clamp bolts. Now we're gonna install the brake caliper. There's a plastic spacer in between the pads that needs to be removed. Just pull it with some pliers and it'll come right out. And make sure the gap between the pads stays open before you install it. We like to use some blue thread lock on these bolts just to make sure they don't vibrate loose. Now just slide the disc in between the two brake pads and fasten it with the bolts. There's a cable mount on the left fork guard that you can loosen up insert the wider section of the brake cable into and then tighten it back up. Make sure it looks similar to this. Now we're gonna connect the swing arm to the shock. Keep in mind there are bushings in both the shock and the swing arm that could fall out, so make sure you don't lose them. For this, you'll need a 13 millimeter wrench and a 15 millimeter socket. Just lift the swing arm up into the shock and fasten it with a bolt and nut. 
then crank it down nice and tight. Now we need to take off the seat to get access to the battery. You'll need a six millimeter Allen wrench to remove the two bolts below the seat through the side panel access holes. Remove the bolts, then pull the seat back and up. Now you'll see your battery. Remove the rubber fastener strap and pull out the hardware. Place the nuts inside the terminals on each side. Then you're gonna connect the red wire to the red terminal. And of course, the black wire to the black terminal. Then slide the rubber caps over the terminals, tuck the wires down nice and tidy into the frame, and then take your last line, which is your tail light connection, and place it towards the back until your tail light's ready to be installed. And here's your tail light. This part is optional. You can leave it off if you'd like, but if you want it on, take it out of the packaging and install it underneath your rear fender at this mount. One thing to note is that in production, the plastic mold overlapped the threads by just a hair, and it'll make it a little difficult to get the bolt started. So you might wanna take a blade like this and cut away the excess plastic first. Then use the three bolts that come with it and a four millimeter Allen wrench and fasten it to the rear fender. Then take the lead and feed it through the holes toward the battery. Then you wanna connect the green wire to the green wire and then connect the yellow wire to the black wire. Once they're connected, you can turn your key and make sure that the light works. If it's all good, you can replace the rubber strap to secure your battery. Now you can put your seat back on. You just need to slide this bracket underneath the tank so it catches. and then replace the two bolts through the side plates to secure the back of the seat. Now we can install the front fender. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket to remove the three bolts underneath the triple clamp. Since you're against the plastic, don't tighten these ones down too much. Just get them nice and snug. Now let's do the headlight. It's mostly just fun and easy stuff from here on out. Just mount it face down using the four bolts included. Peel away the protective backing. Make sure the wires and cables are tucked away and remove the two bolts from the front plate bracket. Then insert the two posts on the bottom of the front number plate into the two holes on the bottom bracket. Then secure the top of the number plate to the top bracket using the two nuts and bolts that were there. Again, not going too tight on the plastic. The headlight feed is already mounted right onto the frame near the steering stem. So you just need to plug it into the one coming off the headlight. It's pretty simple. Then you can turn the key on again to test it. This is an optional spark arrestor that comes in your parts box. If you're riding in a dry climate where there's a high fire hazard, you can install this as a safety precaution. It also makes it quieter, which is good if you're riding around the neighborhood. However, it does sound and perform a lot better without it. Just slip it into the silencer and use the set screw to hold it in place. Then replace the cap. Look for your handlebar pad in the parts box. And slide it onto the crossbar and then put the cover on. One of the foot pegs needs to be installed. There's a cotter pin that you need to straighten out with a pair of needle nose pliers and remove. Then pull out the pin and place the spring on the peg and back into the bracket. Then slide the pin back through the hole and replace the cotter pin where it was. And then just bend it back to keep it in place. Make sure the peg freely moves and springs back in place. Now cut off any leftover zip ties and remove all the backing paper from the decals. Depending on when you ordered, you may or may not have to install the badge and rubber knee pads on the tank. They're just a peel and stick, but make sure the badge is in the right spot before you stick it down so that it lays completely flat. All right, this is a good time to look everything over. Make sure your brakes work. Make sure you tightened every nut and bolt. Check the chain tension. If everything looks good, then it's time to drop it down and put some gas in it. This isn't a two stroke, so you don't need premix, but we recommend using premium gas. 
Your bike will run so much better on the higher octane. Once you've filled it up, look for the petcock valve. All the way up is reserve in case you run out of gas. Horizontal is off and down is on. It's a four stroke so you can leave the gas on most of the time. This is the choke. You need to lift it up in the on position whenever you're starting the bike. Once it's started, push it back down in the off position before you ride. Now that it's all put together and we're excited, there's just a few things to remember. You want to check that your, your brakes are working um, back and front. You've checked all the nuts and bolts that you messed with. Make sure everything's tight. The starting sequence on these bikes is really easy. First thing you want to do is, is uh, turn it on right here. And that's obvious when that's happened because your headlight and tail light will come on. The, these bikes like to be choked when they're cold. So pull the choke on like that. Turn your gas on. And the starter button is the gray one right here. The red one right here is kind of your little emergency kill switch. You need to turn it off quickly. You want to remember to always turn the key off and not just turn it off here so they don't kill your battery. A couple things also to remember is this is a brand spanking new motor. It needs to break in a little bit. You also, it takes a second for the gas to go in here and fill up this little float bowl. So that takes a minute. So don't be alarmed if it doesn't start right up immediately. The uh, break in for the motor is really kind of important. You don't want to do high revs or work it too terribly hard until you've run a tank of gas or two through it. Once you've done that, then have at it. Start button. There we go. All right, on these semi-auto bikes, it's important that they don't idle too high because you don't have a clutch you're pulling in. So you, you don't want it to idle high, but if you do need to turn your idle up just a little bit, it's that knob right there. You don't even need a screwdriver. You can just turn it up a little like that. Can you hear it idle higher? And it's down just a little bit. That's about right, right there. Um, you don't want it to take off on you when you click it into gear. So keep, keep the idle about right there. We are so excited that you decided to try one of our bikes. We think you're going to have a blast with it. We personally have had so much fun with ours. Now, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us an email or a call. If you have questions, uh, have fun.